Hey guys, we're going to an interesting video on Wild Rifts. They were finally back with our patch 2.2B tier list. Now, the last tier list I did was the patch 2.2 tier list that I released publicly, and that tier list was like about an hour long. But today, um, as I said in the, the patch 2.2 tier list, we're not going to be covering every single um, champion on the tier list, unlike that video. So we're just going to be covering the changes and the S and A tier of each Role. So as you guys can see, we're just going to jump straight into it. We're already on our top slash Baron Lane tier list. So now, uh, Malphite is still there. Uh, Malphite has not been touched since patch 2.2, although the items have changed and the uh, rise of the tank items has only helped him. So he is still at the top. But what has changed is Fiora and Akali. So Fiora and Akali actually moved up from the A tier now to the S tier. So now for Akali... Um, I tentatively put her in the A tier previously, but however, now I feel that her damage is just insane. And for people who know how to play Akali properly, they can actually, unlike other assassins, not just only kill one person and get out or die, but she can actually kill multiple people uh, and still get out sometimes. But if not, she can kill multiple people, she goes down. But basically, she can single-handedly win her team, the team fight in the late game. And her damage is just insane as long as you get a hit and you know how to play her. So I do think that she's S tier. And now for Fiora, I did mention split pushing is not the best way to go about things, especially on Wild Rift with the small map. However, uh, in addition to being strong at split pushing, if a, a good Fiora player will definitely just destroy lane against basically any other uh, top lane champion so long as you know how to play Fiora properly. So assuming you're playing Fiora optimally, you probably get uh, a couple of kills in lane. Minimally, you won't die. You will. You'll probably go at least even. So uh, being playing her properly, she's gonna be strong. And in the late game, she can actually just destroy. Uh, people even in team fights. So despite the fact she's meant to be a split pusher, she, she can actually do well in team fights. What do I mean by that? So basically Fiora, she builds like a bruiser type of build. So in my experience as playing as an AD carry, I can get two or three shot by Fiora. Just basically I see a Fiora running at me, she has a gap closer with her lunge, and she can immune damage with her W. So basically she just runs at me. If she just flashes at me, she goes, she Qs, hits my vital that's about more than half of my health gone, and basically I'm out of the fight. And if she can do that and proc her ultimate as well, uh, she could possibly get a heal and continue to queue more people, possibly kill a couple of more of my teammates. So now Fiora, of course, is uh, versatile in the sense that now sort of people are discovering this new sort of assassin playstyle of Fiora instead of a split push style of Fiora. So that's why Fiora is in the S tier. So now we're going to cover the A tier, so now Camille is still there, of course she's still a really good split pusher, uh, um, she's still really good at team fights, single target lockdown, uh, better at team fights than Fiora of course, and we have Darius. Now Darius uh, has actually gotten buffed in patch 2.2A, but then he got nerfed, like his health and his health region got nerfed again at 2.2B, so that's why he's only in the A tier, and personally I will never uh, put Darius in the S tier because of two reasons, firstly, he can be kited, secondly, um, he people know how people who know how to play against him in lane. He's not gonna have a fun time because Darius is is semi like you have to carry with Darius because if you're just even with Darius, it's not very useful. Darius's main strengths come from getting his resets on his ultimate and like wiping out or dealing big damage to the enemy team while tanking. But if you guys, if not, uh, if people, if opponents know how to play against Darius, he is not gonna be able to do that. So I think at best he'll be A tier. Now Ukong and Gragas, of course, still up in the A tier, still really good. Utility, really good team fight. Uh, of course, with Ukong's Cyclone, Darius's, ca uh, sorry, Gragas's Cask, uh, Ultimate, as well as the Body Slam. Um, and they can, they are very versatile, they can be built in multiple ways. Uh, they can be built full damage, they can be built bruiser, and they can be built tank. Uh, tank Gragas is also coming up relatively often. Now, in the B tier, Pantheon moved up from the C tier to the B tier. So, for Pantheon, the thing about Pantheon is, uh, he did get buffed in 2.2a, his early game damage did get buffed in 2.2a, which is, of course, really help helpful for him, so it helped him move up a tier. However, I don't think Pantheon will ever be a higher tier than, than B tier, in my opinion, because with a really strong early game, but 
falling off so hard in the late game. He is basically re uh, relying on getting himself a hit in the early game and then roaming and ganking to get uh, his team ahead. And then he's going to expect his team to carry him in the late game. So now, you, of course, a team reliant champion for me is never uh, really going to be uh, too high tier, especially for the Baron lane, unlike like supports, which are truly supporting the team. But Panton is not really a support. But he, he in the late game, his role is more of like engaging with his W and then trying to soak up as much damage as possible with his E and then either dying because you can't get out of the fight or just retreating and letting your team do the rest. That's, that's pretty much all you can do for your team. So I don't think he's really higher tier than B. Now Garen and Singe drop down from B to C tier. Now Garen... Um, he does have his strengths. He is uh, he is tanky. However, uh, his strength of like his silence and his spin and his ultimate execute is far outweighed by um, other champions. So if you want someone tanky, Darius is a lot better option. Camille and Fiora are also tanky to some extent while bringing uh, some damage as well and a lot more utility than Garen. So Garen gets outclassed by everybody else. Singed. Uh, if you're looking for a tank, play either Malphite or even uh, Darius or Gragas tank. Um, Singe doesn't bring too much to the team. He does have a fling CC, but there's a lot more better CC out there. Like Gragas, if you play tank Gragas, there's the cast, there's the body slam. Way better than a fling, which can only hit one target. Now, I will say that the ground is useful in certain scenarios, but it's not doesn't justify uh, picking Singe just for the ground, in my opinion. And Singe really only does well if the opponents don't know how to play against him because his main damage is his trail and you have to basically run at your opponents run around them uh, people can just run away um, unless people chase you and, and die to your trail or something but not really gonna happen if people know what they're doing so for Vayne, Vayne did move up from E tier to D tier now this is because of the buffs in 2.2 A as well as B so they did buff the cooldown on her ultimate especially in the early game as well as the ultimate damage by 10 at per level in the latest patch now in 80 carry role i don't really think this helps her a lot but in the baron lane i feel it's a lot more helpful for her in the baron lane role now vayne is a specific counter matchup to to um immobile champions like like uh darius or uh even uh characters like Malphite, Darius, Garen, Malphite, Singed, uh, people that can be kited really easily with her tumble. So she can actually, uh, either she can get a hit somehow by getting kills on them if they don't know what they're doing. If not, she just goes even, so she at least doesn't die, she goes even, and she scales well into the late game. So she can do well in the Baron lane position, position which is why I've moved her up by a tier, because I did think that the buffs are significant enough to justify moving her up by a tier. So now quickly, we're going to move on to the jungle. Now, if you guys notice, Lee Sin Evelyn is still up there. Now, I have put Kha'Zix and Rengar in here, but uh, as of recording this, uh, Kha'Zix and Rengar has yet to be released for at least a couple of more days. So now, this is, of course, a prediction. Now, I do believe Kha'Zix and Rengar are going to be top-tier junglers just because of Number one, that invisibility. We've all seen how, how toxic Evelyn is, how broken she is because of her invisibility. And I believe that Kha'Zix and Rengar will be about the same because with both of their ultimates, they can turn invisible. They can't easily um, lane gang. They can't easily... They have gap closers with uh, Rengar's boost jump and Kha'Zix E. And I'm guessing that their damage number is probably going to be broken uh, on release. Of course, this is just a prediction. We don't really know how they'll be like. But uh, knowing... Uh, how Riot releases champions in, in both uh, PC and as well as Wild Rift. Normally, uh, champions on release um, do have pretty high numbers, so I do expect them to be top tier assassins. Um, Evelyn still stays in the S tier despite the nerfs to her ultimate. Now, her, the nerfs to her ultimate does affect her snowball potential because she can. Uh, she does have an ultimate up less, which guarantees kills less. However, they didn't actually hit any of her numbers or or anything like that. So she still does as much damage. Just that uh, she probably uh, kills people less often, so less snowball. But I still believe that uh, it doesn't hit her main problem for high numbers and her invisibility. Because there are no control wards, she still has her greatest strength, which is just simply being invisible. Which uh, Kha'Zix and Rengar is also going to have when they release. So Lee Sin is... Uh, always up there, despite uh, nerfs in uh, many, many patches ago. Of course, people always make Lee Sin work. Uh, good Lee Sin players always will make Lee Sin work with their, their good mechanics. Lee Sin also very versatile, can be built bruiser, can be built assassin, can even be built tank if really needed. Shivana, of course, 
uh, the 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 A, the A tier basically just stayed the same. Shivana is still really good at uh, hard farming, scaling with with uh, dragons, uh, ganking when her ultimate is up. Wukong strong ganks with his ultimate. Uh, Vi and Jarvan really. Uh, uh, average clear speed, really strong ganks. Uh, good lockdown from both of their ultimates. Uh, really strong ganks with their knockups. So it's still, still up there. And the only addition we have is Ramus. So now Ramus, the, the the issue with Ramus, I believe, is that he's only C tier. He's all right. Like he's not bad. He's not. He's not D or E tier. But the the thing about Ramus is that he. Is really good only against uh, AD because he mainly builds like Sunfire Cape and Thornmill and he likes to build against AD so it's good counter pick against an AD uh, enemy comp but um, generally there's at least one or two AP in the enemy team so he, he never really uh, gets uh, he can, can never really counter pick and uh, he, there's a lot of skills that can interrupt uh, Ramus's role and now I have faced Ramus's in a couple of match and believe it or not despite playing AD carry and being Ramus's main target I have basically yet to to get hit by a Ramus Q somehow after playing against so many games of Ramus now this is because uh, Janna, uh, as you guys will see later in the support tier list, I believe now is the top uh, support, and she can interrupt Ramus very easily. Ramus is very predictable; like he's gonna roll straight at you. So uh, with like Janna Tornado, all you have to do is really just just press it twice, and basically uh, Ramus is, Ramus just gets interrupted. So I feel that like Ramus uh, is is not the best. And at the end of the day, he he has single target. His Q hits one person. His Tan hits one person. Is really short range. His ultimate uh, honestly doesn't really do. Uh, much damage at at all, honestly. So Ramus, uh, I believe, not in the the best spot. Now Ramus, of course, uh, is the newest release, so there is an exception to the to the so-called new release thing. So now Camille, I have actually added her to the jungle list as well because we have actually been seeing some Camille jungle around. I believe she's below average. She's in the D tier, but uh, probably still better than like Mundo Graves and, and Zin Zhao. Um, her she has really good single target lockdown with her ultimate, but I believe that that you know Jarvan does a better job. He can lock down an entire team. Vi does a, a similar job, um, locking down one person like the Camille ultimate, and Camille's E is a little bit awkward to use compared to like Vi's Q, which is a lot easier to hit. And Camille's clear speed, especially in the early game, is really slow and can't really compete with all the um, S S and A two junglers. Her clear speed is just really uh, low, so that's why she isn't really good. So now we're actually gonna move on to the mid lane. So mid lane, huge, huge changes. So first up, we got Diana moving from the C tier all the way up to the top of the S tier. Probably between uh, Diana and Katarina, they're the two best um, mid laners. So Diana, of course, got the buff in 2.2 A, or rather, I should say, the mini uh, re rework. So she did get her. E uh, passive of the of the auto, uh, auto attack speed increasing uh, transfer to her passive. So now she attacks. Uh, uh, it has increased attack speed after uh, every skill cast, and and she also got her her numbers improved on basically like all her skills. So she all four of her abilities got buffed. We covered that in the patch review already. Check that out if you guys have not. But um, she has actually got this big big. Buff, and because of the big buff, she is ha she has actually managed to jump all the way up there. So people now build her with like a semi fire build. They go like Rod of Ages, International Tooth, and then like a Boot Enchant, uh, Death Cap, Oblivion Orb, and, and like a Void Staff if you need. This that's the general Diana build. Uh, but Diana does like so much damage, and she can get onto you so easily like she just has to hit anybody with with her Q she can immediately get a, a jump to the person free reset on her E and just basically it's like a free gap closer that costs nothing and even proxy passive to give her increased attack speed and her AoE ultimate CC is really good utility and now basically the way to use Diana's ultimate is to fully charge it because when it's fully charged and it hits everybody in the area it does a ton of damage. Now I did say before that the PC instant cast is better. I still believe so but with the um, uh, charged up ultimate with that huge range generally people can get out of their range just by walking. Like If they want to get out of that ultimate assuming you're standing directly on top of them uh, when you cast the ultimate they're gonna have to flash out they're gonna have to dash out so generally Diana ultimate despite having to charge hits like everybody and does a ton of damage so Diana now is just really really broken. Diana, Diana's who know how to play the game are just running rampant. Now the story is the same with Katarina. Katarina did get her 
passive nerfed by 10 points at each level and her shunpo range decreased. But the nerfs are not really enough to hit her uh, really hard. Now Riot does like to nerf champions bit by bit. Um, sort of like uh, Orianna and Lulu. They did get nerfed a little bit by a little bit um, uh, initially as well. So they, they like to nerf champions gradually. So generally, uh, champions that are really broken, they get nerfed over like 3 or 4 patches before they finally fall off like top tier. So Katarina just got her... Uh, first nerf, so she's still alright for now. She's still really, really good. She still does insane damage. She still snowballs in, uh, insanely well. And for people who know how to play Katarina, she can single handedly just take over the game. Like, as long as your team, as long as you're not the one initiating, as long as your team is doing some, putting in some work, you can basically just clean up the entire fight. So now, Corky stays in the A tier, still really good, still scales really well. Oriana. Despite me saying that she is not really affected by the nerves previously, she has been, her play rate has gone down by a ton. Uh, however, she still is really good, like she still scales really well. She still has really good uh, utility with her shock waves, uh, with her shield, and you know, with her general kit, it's still really good. She still, she still scales really well, just not top tier anymore. So Akali uh, moves from B to A, as I said in the uh, top lane tier list, her damage is insane, she can take over games by herself, however her matchups are not as good uh, as in the Baron lane, so that's why she's like one tier down, just not as good. Galio got buffed and nerfed multiple times, but now I feel he's at a relatively balanced spot, especially after they fixed the bug on his Q, I feel like he's actually alright now, he's not insanely broken with that insane Q damage, even like at, without any items, so now I think Gal is pretty balanced now, he has a ton of CC, um, even has a good tankiness even when you're building damage, and if you're building him tank, of course he's, he's just a rock, just really hard to take down, so Galio still stays in the A tier, still really good of a pick, uh, Ziggs actually moves up from B to A tier. Now, I did not want to overrate Ziggs in my initial tier list. I did put him in B tier f at first, but now Ziggs has shown that he is just really good at tower taking, uh, really good at poking, really good uh, damage uh, skills with really big damage in the late game. Just does basically does really well. He's only really weak to assassins, um, like when they, they jump uh uh, on him, there's there is the only thing he can really do is to use his bomb, uh, um, to 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 push them away. Which, if done accurately, uh, he can survive. But if if he if he doesn't do that properly, he basically gets killed by anyone who gets into melee range of him because he's he is an artillery mage, so he just need to have like long range to to sort of um get off his damage safely. Which is why I, I, initially that was a problem. Uh, for Ziggs because the map is really small, but just his numbers at the moment is just really good. So he does still go to the A tier. Just I don't think he's S tier. Twisted Fate does actually fall down from the A tier. Um, although I still think he's really good. Nothing has actually changed about him. I, I, I of course, uh, B tier is still champions who are good. It's just that uh, he doesn't do as well as the the picks above him uh, at the moment, and he's not even uh, highly picked. So we can't really see optimal Twisted Fate play, but I do believe he can actually move back to the A tier if we see uh, people playing him very well, see him creeping more into the meta, but for now, um, he is going to go down to the B tier. Now, Pantheon is actually moving from the E tier to the C tier. Now, that's a, a two uh, tier jump, but uh, of course, he's still not as good as the, the top lane. Now, of course, from the mid lane, he can actually uh, roam more easily with with, with uh, his ultimate to, to um, both uh, top as well as bot lane and you know get his team ahead in that way. However, uh, for that, Twisted Fate is just better. Like, Twisted Fate skills better than Pantheon. He does Pantheon's job better in my opinion. So Pantheon roams with his ultimate um, uh, ease over to someone and then his team just follows up. Twisted Fate is even better because when you press your Twisted Fate ultimate you can use it in a bush so enemies don't even see it coming. Pantheon's ultimate indicator is giant so there's no way of hiding that. That's the first advantage of Twisted Fate. Secondly, um, you know, Twisted Fate it has a uh, Twisted Fate and Pantheon both have a point and click stun, so that's uh, that's that's the same uh, from that in both aspects. However, Twisted Fate is AP. Now, if you realize, um, basically the entire S and A tier are all AP because the main AP damage of the team is normally in mid lane. So now the problem with Pantheon is that he is uh, not AP. Obviously, he's AD. So you might mess up your team comp with Pantheon because majority of mid lane champions, the entire S tier, the entire A tier, and in fact the entire 
B tier as well are all AP. So uh, you might mess up your team pump, team comp because of that. So not a good idea to pick Pant in mid, but of course he is still viable in mid. Now Lulu uh, moving up from F to E. Now I just think that there must be some kind of distinction between Lulu and uh, Evelyn because Evelyn is just horrible in the mid lane. Probably we're, we're, we might remove her from the tier list entirely um, the next patch because I've been seeing less and less Evelyn played. But the thing is, I still do see Evelyn playing mid lane for some reason. So that's why she's still on the tier list. But with that out of the way, we're going to move on to the ADCs. Now, ADCs, of course, is my main role, so I have uh, you know, quite a bit to share about this, and there have actually been a lot of changes to ADCs. Now, Ezreal was B tier, top of B tier in my previous tier list. Now, I have mentioned in the videos I made about him, like the complete guide and the commentary guide, that he's probably actually top of A tier, but now I disagree with that. I think he's S tier. I think he's probably the second best AD carry... Um, just that Zaya has to be the best, in my opinion. Now, if you know how to play Zaya properly, you understand the spacing, understand the feathers. I think Zaya is just the best AD carry. They even buffed her by lowering her mana cost on her W and also increasing the root duration on her E, even though she was already the best AD carry, in my opinion. So now, Ezreal now is, is up there. Now, as we are talking about the Assassin meta, Ezreal has an E. As long as you hold your E, you're always going to be safe in lane. You shouldn't be dying in lane at all. Unless you're using your E wrong or using your E too aggressively. You never hold your E and you're using it when you're not supposed to. You should never die in lane with an E and a flash. No way you die in lane as long as your positioning is good. So... Ezreal, has, and Ezreal scales very well into late game. He hits like a truck in the late game. The only flaw with Ezreal is that he's single target. He can't hit people AoE, but with his, with his uh, reverted Q uh, damage, he does still do a lot of damage. So he is definitely an S tier, especially for the safety and the scaling. And we take Champion Ezreal for even more damage. Kai'Sa, no changes to her, still remains in the S tier. Corky moves up from B to A tier. Now, I always thought Corky was A tier. Uh, AD carry in my opinion, but just that he is of course better played mid, but now um, in the support role as you guys will see later, a lot of supports are like engaged supports which is good for Corky because Corky needs like a lot of CC and a lot of engage for him to work well. Reason is, uh, especially in lane, you want someone like a Leona, someone like uh, you know, someone like, like, like an, maybe like an Alistar, or like basically you just need someone to lock people down, and especially Leona is really good for Corky. Corky Leona combo is a classic. And with Leona, you know, rising up in the meta, which we will take a look at later as well, Corky is going to rise up as well now. Uh, uh, even without Leona, Corky is really good. J uh, just that he requires lockdown to really get off his Gatling gun armor shred, which is where a lot of his damage comes from, which is shredding the armor and the magic resist with his Gatling gun. And of course, weaving the Triforce procs, uh, Spellblade procs in between. Jinx remains in A tier. Uh, of course, still really good hyper carry scaling to late game. Of course, weak early game, but you know it's it's fine. Uh, Draven stays in the B tier. Considered putting him up to A tier, but you know he just got nerfed as well, and it takes a lot of skill to play Draven. And and really, the fact of the matter is, some people who know how to play Draven, Draven can't really be good. So I think B tier is an appropriate spot. Uh, MF drops from A to B tier because I have actually been playing her and, and really uh, after getting hit by that round of nurse now she, her play rate is down by a lot and now she, her damage and just in general she feels very lackluster especially compared to all the ADCs above her. Jin moves up from C to B tier because after testing him I have actually realized that his damage is still alright. Especially when you take champion and you build like a long sword first and, and into Yomu. So Jin, uh, Jin's build has been, you know, changing consistently. He doesn't really have a strong build path at the moment, but he still is all right. So I still think he moves up a tier. Varus and Tristana both got buffed. I I, I preemptively put them in the C tier, which is like the all right, the okay tier, because I do not know how good they are. I honestly have not tested Tristana yet, but I do believe she at least moves up one tier because of the consistent buff she's been getting and Varus as well. Next patch they might even be B tier if, uh, if if I test them and I, I deem that they are really uh, that good. But for now, we're going to preemptively put them in the C tier. Ash actually drops down from the C tier to the D tier. Now, the reason for this is that her damage is really, really like last. So she's the lowest damage out of the entire page of AD carries here. Like even Vayne. Vayne late game does way more damage than Ash. Uh, of course, single target. But Ash's damage really, you know, um, is really too low. Of course, she makes up uh, for that in utility with her slows and her ultimate giving a really, really long stun. 
However, um, as the AD carry, you really need to be able to output the damage. So I don't think that uh, them buffing like her Q's cooldown multiple times, actually, I mean, sorry, her W's cooldown multiple times, I don't really think that helps at all. So now, we're just going to quickly move on to the support cheer list. The review is getting pretty long. So now, I believe Janna is the best support at the moment. Now, why? Uh, um, because if you look at the supports after her, it's Alistair, Braum, Galio, and Leona. Now, uh, Janna is the hard counter to to Alistair, Galio, and Leona, which are basically the three supports right after her. And Braum doesn't really engage, engage. He, he engages with his ultimate, not a dash, but Janna is still good against him. So basically, Janna is only good because uh, Alistair, Galio, Galio, Braum, and Leona are good. If, if let's say, they weren't there and... Um, the top supports were Seraphine, Lux, and Nami. Janna wouldn't be this high. The reason Janna is this high is because she can uh, interrupt the engages of Alistair, Galio, and Leona um, consistently if she if the Janna player is good, and that's pretty much just the entire reason Janna is good at the moment. And she still does decent damage for a support. She scales really well, uh, heals her team with her ultimate, shields the team with her with her E. Pretty much nothing more you can ask for, from her. Um, Alistar, still good despite all the nerfs. Just really good tanky and gate support. Definitely what you want. Um, Braum, really good counter matchup against Alistar as uh, as well, which is why uh, which is why Braum is really good. And just a really good tank support in general. Um, her, his E counters uh, uh, all the skill shots and projectiles if you know how to use it properly. Galio, of course, tank Galio as support does really well. A lot of CC, really good tankiness. Um, pretty much it. Now, Leona is actually something I'm going to be covering in a commentary guide really soon. But Leona is a pretty curious case because I always say that Leona's biggest problem is that she's a tank and gauge support, but she's not tanky. Now, I have a different opinion, which I'm actually going to cover briefly now, but more in depth on the commentary guide. But Leona, now I feel, is not uh, really meant to be played as a tank. She's just meant to be played as an engaged support. So now, she's really only good with uh, uh, all ADCs, like Tristana, like Jin, like Draven, you know, people who, who do, like, even, like Kaisa, people who, like, do a lot of damage. So she basically, she ease in. That's one CC. Uh, she has ultimate, another CC. A Q, another CC. So basically, her entire role is to engage and lock down the enemy. Now, while she's doing this, if any other enemies are around, she's going to get blasted. And, she, and you're going to see in the comment you get, you're always going to survive on low health, or maybe you're going to die. But the entire role of her is just to engage and lock them down, get your AD carry the kills, and then possibly just die. Or if not, just... I just recall get out of lane. So her role now is not like a tank. You do build tank, but you're not tanky unless you get into the really late game. In the early game, her numbers are still horrible, even with her W max. So uh, she pretty much just serves as an engage support, but she does her role really well. Uh, she engages. She doesn't engage as well as like Alistair, but uh, after Alistair engages, he can't do anything anymore. He just runs around tanking damage. But for her, she engages. That's a root. She presses Q, a one second stun, and an ultimate, another stun or a slow at the minimum. So she has a really long lockdown for her AD carry to get the kill. And if you combo that with something like a Jin W, even longer lockdown, a kill is basically guaranteed. At least a trade. So now, um, Seraphine remains in the A tier, of course, really good. Um, really good. Uh, team fight ultimate, really good utility. Now Lux and Nami have actually moved up. Now I feel that Lux is just really good as a support, just really good building support. Now I'm, I'm talking about W max Lux. So now if you max your W, you're essentially giving your team a free locket. Uh, her W procs all the support items, Arden procs Harmonic Echoes, procs everything. And I just think that Lux is really good. She has, you know, really good supportive capabilities with her W, free locket. Uh, you know, CC with with her Q, and she even does decent damage, even though she doesn't build damage as a support. She does decent damage with her with her E and her ultimate, and uh, her ultimate also long range sniping too if if needed. Now Nami, now as you guys know, you, as you guys seen all my gameplays, I have uh, been doing with a Nami uh, support main. So now I feel that Nami, if you're good on her, like like the uh, person I play with, just can just can turn the tide of the game if you can hit your bubbles. Uh, if you can hit your bubbles, you can set up a lot of kills, you can deny a lot of uh, things, uh, a lot of uh, enemy engages. Of course, not as easy as a Janna tornado, but Nami bubble does the job if you're really that skilled. Nami, Nami uh, ultimate can do the job as well. And her healing, 
on her W does really make a difference, especially the later and later you get on into the game. So I really feel that Nami is actually a good support. Rakan, unfortunately, has dropped down from A to B just because he is an engaged support, but he is not really tanky. So he has sort of the Leona problem, but Leona now does his job better because he only has... <coughs> He only has a W engage and that's it. He can of course have the safety of jumping back, but he can't really lock him down as long as uh, like Leona. So that is why well, he's just not as good. Now Lulu, uh, Lulu and Sona just good support. Soraka actually drops down from B to C tier. Because Soraka uh, just doesn't support as well as pretty much any other healing and shielding support. Janna outclasses her by a ton. Lulu and, and Sona outclasses her by a lot as well. And yeah, nothing much to say about that. So next we the next change we have, Gragas moves from E all the way up to C. Now the reason is the tech Gragas build is actually doing really well right now. And if you play Gragas support, build him tank. I do believe that he can actually support a de uh, decently, honestly. He can actually support decently with the tank build with his CC from his ultimate and his E. And just building tank and front lining for your team because a lot of team compositions don't have a tank. Like if your top laner is in Malphite or like Darius, he, the pro top laner isn't tanky. Mid laner probably is an AP champion, not tanky. AD carry is not tanky. Um, jungler probably is going to be an assassin. Evelyn, Rengar, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin probably not a tank. Or at best you get like a Shivana who's a bruiser. So actually tank supports uh, are pretty good now because the other roles don't really pick tank. Which is why I think Gragas for this current meta just moves up by a lot. And the last change we have is Annie moves down from D to E. Now I feel that Annie and Malphite both being level 5 engaged supports, they need to have some sort of gap between them. Because I feel Malphite is better than Annie in support just because Annie can't really poke as well as Malphite's Q. Malphite Q can just poke really easily, just sit back. Annie has really short range, she can poke. Um, Malphite can tank damage, as we covered, uh, you know, tank tanky supports are better, but now this is just Malphite in comparison to Annie. I wouldn't re really recommend Malphite as support anyway, but if you had to choose between Malphite and Annie, Malphite is just better. They're, they're both their uh, R engages, uh, both their R engages, Malphite's engage is better, because Annie needs like a flash or polar belt. Malphite has a better engage, Malphite can tank, Malphite can poke, and Annie can do any of these three better than Malphite. So Malphite and Annie just shouldn't be in the same tier, which is why I move Annie down a tier. So with that uh, out of the way, that is it for all the roles. Now I still took like half an hour, which is like about ha uh, half the time it took for me to explain every single champion. Still pretty long, but I just want to cover everything in depth so that you guys know what's up for the current meta. So with that, thanks for watching the video guys, and goodbye.